Hi there. My name is Jacob Norris, and I'm currently a 3D environment artist working in games and films. Some of you may also know me as Pure Polygons. In this video, I wanted to go over the Omniverse Create content browser, as well as collecting projects, exporting assets, uploading projects, and just working with what's called relative pathing and links inside of Omniverse. Just to start off, you'll look here at the bottom of the screen in our UI, you'll see the content tab. This is the general layout that you'll get once you start Omniverse Create for the first time. You can easily grab the content tab and move it around, link it to any of these other panels, and just organize Omniverse Create however you'd like. I'm going to keep it at the default setup for now. If I put it in the center here, it just adds, adds it to the tab at the top. If I remove it and put it on this left panel, you'll see it's snapping to the left side now, and so on and so forth for each of these other angles. I'm going to move it back to the, the tabbed content at the top. I just clicked it, held it down, and dragged it to the left. On our left here as well, you'll see a, a couple different drop-downs that we have. There's my computer, which is just simply going to access any of the files that you have on your machine itself. There's also the Omniverse tab, and if we open that up, I have currently running what's called localhost. That's because inside of my Omniverse launcher under Nucleus, I've set up a local Nucleus server that is called localhost. And from there, I've actually also got something called Omniverse Drive running. And the three of these things, Omniverse Create, Nucleus, and Omniverse Drive, allow me to create projects within this Omniverse tab and link all of my programs and software together, such as Blender, Unreal Engine, Maya, Omniverse Create, Omniverse Drive, and so on and so forth. That's the best way to work inside of Omniverse, because now, if I come into my projects here, you'll also notice that on the right, it's creating checkpoints for me. This is similar to Perforce files. You'll get version history, or for those of you unfamiliar with Perforce, Dropbox or Google Drive, where you can have version history every time you're saving a file. Another great feature is the Bookmark tab. So as I navigate through my files, if there's a specific directory or folder that I go to very often, once I'm inside of that directory, if I just click this little bookmark icon here, it'll come up with a pop-up for me to name this folder. And I like materials, so I often come to the materials folder. I'll click OK. And now if I drop down my bookmarks files, you'll see I have I like materials and MI floor. These are some of the places I just tend to navigate to more often. If you don't want it anymore, you can just right click on it and delete the bookmark. It's going to double check because I really like materials, but in this case, I'll go ahead and delete it and hit yes. Now, if I come back to my projects, another great thing about these URL links is if you're working in a server with other individuals, not just on a local host, but a server that can connect to multiple computers and multiple people, then say they want a specific file from me, I can simply navigate to the file, right click on that file, and copy the URL link to it. They can take that and either paste it directly into their content browser URL link at the top here. And if they were to do that and hit enter, it's actually going to open that file directly for you just as it would with Windows Explorer. So if, if you're familiar with Windows Explorer, it's very similar to the layout, the understanding, and the way that that works. So it should be very intuitive to most people already. The very interesting thing about these URL links and these paths to assets as well. If we go ahead and select this slot machine asset here, you'll notice if I scroll down to the references that slot machine uv.usd is here with this simple period and backslash. That means it's actually a relative path USD, which means that it's directly inside of the folder that I'm working in for this slot machine environment. If I click on another asset in the scene, such as this book, if I scroll down to the asset path for this one, 
you'll see it's actually referencing directly off of a local drive that I have, my D drive. And in this case, someone else who's going to try to access this file through the Omniverse server wouldn't be able to do so because it's just a local file for myself. If I wanted to send this book to someone, they won't have it as I mentioned. So I'll need to right click on the book here in the stage. And in doing so, I can actually export selected. This will send them just the USD file though. The difficulty with that is now I'm not going to have the materials, any of the textures, or anything else that's associated with this book. So one thing that's really interesting and really cool about Omniverse here is if I navigate to this book now, I can select on it, scroll down to my asset path, and click the locate file icon right here to the right. When I do that, it's going to take me immediately to where that book is on my local drive. In this case, if I want to send this book to someone now and make sure that I get all the files for it, I can right click on that book and go to collect asset. This is, like I said, very important compared to export asset because when you're exporting it, you may be missing all of those dependencies that come along with it. So if I select collect asset, I can say USD only, I can do materials only, say I already sent them the exported USD for just the book, now I can send them the materials. In this case, I'm going to uncheck all these, which means it's going to collect the entire book asset, and I can save that now to my Omniverse server. After I've navigated to where I want to save it, I just click collect. It'll take a moment, grab all those dependencies for me, and now coming back to this slot machine folder, I can find the book folder. Here's my It's Good to Read book, and it comes with the book as well as the textures. So now, if I'd simply like to update the reference location, the asset path for where this book is pointing to, so that it no longer points to my local file, but the server file, I can just navigate to where we exported that asset. I can select the book here in the scene that I want to replace and scroll down to the asset path and I can either drag and drop that server book over to the asset path and replace the asset this way or I can right click on it and copy the URL link to this server book, select my whole asset path and overwrite it by clicking paste, control V and hitting enter. I've now replaced the local file for that book and pointed it to the Omniverse server book that we have here. You'll see it's also interesting because I copied that URL link into the asset path it does not look like a relative path. It's pointing directly to where this would be on the server. If we want this to be a relative pathing it's as easy as drag and dropping it right there. Now it's relatively pointing to where this is on our Omniverse server. So in case that becomes confusing and you're wondering why some of them have this period in front, why some of them are pointing directly to where it is on the server, and why some are local files, the best way then to solve all of these issues is if I come back to my root folder where this whole project is. If I want to make sure that everything is relative, everything's collected, and all of my asset paths and all of my references are relative, then I can right click on the main project USD and collect the entire asset for this whole project USD. After I've collected everything, I can navigate to where I collect it and then right click on those files and download them if I'd like to save them locally to my machine or just w begin working with them now as I would. If you want to move files then from one server to another, collecting assets is a great way to do that because after you download assets, you can re-upload them. Let's go back to that book and use that as an example. If I come back to this book, I can actually right-click the entire folder for the book and download it to my local machine. If we just put it here on the desktop, I can click Save. After that book is downloaded, Let's say I want to upload it somewhere else on the server. Maybe I don't want it in my slot machine project, but I can come into this retro office project, right click, and upload files and folders into the content browser here. Now if I navigate to my desktop, we'll see that collected asset right here. 
I can then upload the entire folder by going back to this, selecting open, and it imports everything inside of that folder that I had selected. So this is a great way to transfer files, share files, and just ensure that your projects always have all the files that they need when you want to work with others or you're collaborating on projects, especially if you have an Omniverse server that will solve a lot of your issues in doing so. As your projects start to become a bit heavier, you have more assets for them, and it's starting to become a bit cluttered, let's look and see how we can navigate through some of your files a bit easier. Say we come into our props folder here, and there's quite a few files to look through. If I just come up to my search option, I can type in lamp, I love lamp, and hit enter. And it'll give me anything that has the word lamp in it. If there's multiple types of files, like textures, not only just USDs, you can click on this filter icon and filter by whatever file type you'd like to look through. If we just want to find USDs, I can select USD. Luckily all these files are already USD, so we're still seeing them. But if I select textures, now those USDs are gone, and since there's no textures in this folder, nothing is showing up. In order to fix that, we need to come back to our filters and uncheck textures. This happens to me on occasion where sometimes I'll forget that I have a certain filter selected and I start freaking out because I'm like, oh my gosh, where did all my files go? It's always a good idea just to come up to your filters and make sure that you don't have anything specifically selected in there so that you can see all of your files within a folder. This is just an additional note that I want to mention. If you ever have issues with files not properly showing up or with thumbnails not updating in your scene, the best way to alleviate that most of the time is just by right-clicking in your content browser and going to refresh. Luckily all my files are up to date and so nothing else is showing up or popping up here by accident. But that's just another thing to check on occasion to make sure that everything you're looking for is where it's at. Hopefully this gave you a much better understanding of navigating the browser, using asset paths, the difference between exporting files and collecting files, and just working together as a team or even with yourself in order to properly save and navigate all of the artwork that you have on your computer. Thanks so much for following along and hope you'll check out some more of these videos soon.